Okay, I got to start a little quick. Um, here's uh, we're starting hyperbolas, conic sections. We wrote down the first part of the equation. There it is. Second equation looks like this. Here's all the changes. We have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1, where a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. So what changed from the uh, first one to the second one? What changed? The x and y order changed. And that makes one of these a horizontal and one of these a vertical parabola or hyperbola. So how are they different from ellipses in terms of the equation? A minus as opposed to a plus. Okay, so that's really the disparity. As you notice with ellipses, both the x squared and the y squared were positive. Here, the x squared is positive, the y squared is negative. So you got the y squared is positive, the x squared is negative. So positive and negative really affects this, makes a big difference. Okay, so vertices, what do the vertices look like? Well, in this situation, the vertices are going to be plus or minus a, zero. And that's stretched along the x-axis. Whereas in this situation, we have plus or minus, I'm sorry. And it's stretched along the y-axis, we have 0 plus or minus a. Those are my vertices. Let's plot them. So for a situation like this, I might have negative A units and positive A units. And this black line is going to represent my transverse axis. If Y squared comes first, then A is going to be up here. Negative A will be down there. And again, the black line represents my transverse axis. So, that's the disparity between the two. If x squared is first, it's horizontal. If y squared is first, then it's vertical. Any questions on that? Okay, what do you think the length of the transverse axis is? Yep, twice the a value. In one situation, it's horizontal. In the other situation, is vertical. So you have uh, transverse axis, which is horizontal, transverse axis, which is vertical. Okay, now we come to asymptotes and foci. In order to graph these things, we have to have asymptotes because the graph approaches a line that it never touches, and that's the definition of an asymptote. So I'm going to show you the full shape of the graph here in a second. But in order to graph the asymptotes, we also need to use our B value. So here, B is along the Y-axis. And so if I just would say plot a B value, which we could determine later on, What I do then is I make a box. I make a box with those four points. I'll draw the asymptotes in red. The asymptotes go through the corners of the box. Now that's enough information to be able to sketch the graph. This is a horizontal or hyperbola because x squared is first. It goes through the vertices and it approaches but never touches the asymptotes. So kind of like when we graphed secant and cosecant a while ago, we got all sorts of different shapes. So in this scenario, we have uh, we have a lot of other stuff on the graph. The only thing that's actually part of the graph is is the blue curves. That's it. Now we need equations for the asymptotes. You tell me if you were to describe an asymptote to somebody, what is one word you would use to describe it? Okay, 
One word. Starts with an L, rhymes with ein. Line. There you go. So, a line has the equation of y equals mx plus b. So we could write equations for these asymptotes, and it's really not that hard. What is the y-intercept or the b-value for these uh, asymptotes? What y-value do these asymptotes cross through? Zero. They cross through right through the origin. So we could condense our equation down to y equals just mx. So we just need a slope. How do we calculate slope? B over A, rise over run. So Nathan sees here, we are up the units, we are over A units. So the slope of your asymptote in this situation will be plus or minus B over A. So my equation is Y equals plus or minus B over A times X. That's the equation for my asymptote. Beautiful. Now I do the next one, okay? Well, in this situation, A is uh, stretched along the vertical axis. And so if I wanted to plot B, you know, whatever that B value would happen to be, I make a box. And with those points, with my box, I sketch my asymptote. Now, instead of passing through, instead of going horizontally, these go vertically, and they pass through this vertex spot right here, our A values. Now, as you write an equation for those asymptotes, what is your rise over your run in that situation? A over B. So my equation for my asymptotes will be Y equals positive or negative A over B times X. Why do I have plus or minus? Because you have two lines, one that goes positive, one that goes negative. That's the only disparity between them. Any questions on what we've said so far? Okay, then I need to find my foci. The foci in this situation do sit on the horizontal axis. They are plus or minus C, zero. In this situation, they sit on the vertical axis, so zero and plus or minus C. The question is, how do we find C? Do you remember how we found C yesterday? C squared is A squared minus B squared. Today, it's C squared is A squared plus B squared. is just the Pythagorean theorem. We now have all of our information. If you wanted to plot the foci, you're going to sit somewhere right on the inside here. Right on the inside of that bowl shape. And we'll find distances in a, in a little bit here. Any questions or problems or issues or feelings or opinions about what we've done so far? Nothing? Okay. Again, let's sketch a graph of the following. Let's find the vertices, the foci, the length of the transverse axis, and the asymptotes. We start with the vertices. tell me first, is this going to be a horizontal hyperbola or a vertical hyperbola? Why? Starts with x squared, it's positive, so I start with x squared, okay? It's whatever's first, whatever's positive, okay? So x squared is positive, y squared is negative, so, so it's going to be a horizontal. So what are my vertices going to be? Good, plus or minus 2, 0. Move over two units. 
use my blue pen to plot those vertices right there. What's the length of your transverse axis going to be? Four. I'm now going to construct a box so I can draw my asymptotes. How many units should I move in the vertical direction now? Five. Do I have enough information now to sketch the graph? Yep, I started that focus. I, or, I'm sorry, not focus the vertex. <coughs> so this is a very wide hyperbola. What are the equations for the asymptotes? Y equals plus or minus, and I'm going to have rise over run. What's my rise? 5 over 2. Good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. When I did that same thing second hour. Folk guy. I got to find him. How do you find him? A squared plus B squared is C squared, so you get 25 plus 4 is C squared. 29 is equal to C squared. So the square root of 29 is equal to C, or is that about 5.5, I suppose? So the bulk guy, give me plus or minus square root of 29, 0. So I'll plot those in red. Uh, I'm going to go over 5.5 units. So I get 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. So those foci sit quite a ways from the vertex, which makes it a much larger shape. What do you think? Pretty straightforward from yesterday? Let me, uh, can you pretend like what I say this next part really, really matters? I, I just want to show you back to the definition. The definition is all points whose difference between the distances of the two foci is the same. So what that means is if you pick a point on here and you look at segment one and segment two, which one's longer? If you took 2 minus 1, segment 2 minus segment 1, that should be the same as, let's uh, try this one here. If you went that length and that length. So let's say that's segment 3 and that's segment 4. <clears throat> Those, that, should be the, that difference should be the same. That's how they're technically generated. Mathematically, we would look for the difference between them to be the a constant. So whatever the length of a of a segment two minus the length of segment one, that should be the same as segment four minus segment three. And uh, maybe this representation does a does a good job at that. Maybe does. So maybe the difference is a length of that much. Maybe that segment represents what the difference is all the time. Okay. All right. Actually, I guess.
Oh, my cord was unplugged. You didn't hear me there for a second. I bet there was a panic on YouTube Nation at that point. What do you think, Whitney? Total panic. <laughs> All right. So here's what we have. Uh, it's time to fill in the blanks. This is pretty easy. Y squared over 9 minus X squared over 16 equals 1. Bada bing, bada bam, bada booski. That's it. Nice compadre. Any questions on that? The second one is significantly more difficult. And maybe answers a question for you about your last assignment. The number of people had it second hour. Either that means that they're not as smart as you or it means that they're further in their, in their assignment than you are. So we'll see which it is. Um, it says foci is plus or minus 4, 0, and asymptotes of y equals plus or minus 2. So what I have to do here is I still have to find a, b, and c. Can you tell me this could be an x squared or a y squared? Yeah. Sorry. X squared. Because your foci sit on the x-axis, it's going to be an x squared. So I have x squared over whatever a squared is minus y squared over whatever b squared is equals 1. So we've got to figure out a and b. What value do you know so far? C is 4. Yeah, see, you look at the asymptotes, and what you say to yourself is, is if this is a horizontal per or hyperbola, then we know that the asymptotes will be in the form of y equals plus or minus b over a times x. And that leads you to believe that b over a is equal to 2 over 1. So right away you say, well, that means that b is going to be 2 and a is going to be 1. But if you do a squared plus b squared, you don't get 4, do you? As a matter of fact, this is a ratio. How do you know it's not 4 over 2? How do you know it's not 1 over 1 half? How do you know it's not 2 square root of 3 over the square root of 3? So instead of calling this 1 and 2, I will call it 1x and 2x. I don't, I don't think so. It says y is equal to plus or minus 2x. So y is equal to plus or minus 2 over 1 times x. And b over a. So b is 2, a is 1. Or b is 2x, a is 1x. So I have to solve for this. I have to solve for x now. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem to say b squared or I'm sorry, c squared, which is 16, equals a squared plus b squared. I will set up that equation, and I will solve for x. Once I solve for x, I know what a is. Then I double it to figure out what b is. So, what to do, what to do, what to do. square the 2x, we get 4x squared. x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. Divide by 5, we get 16 over 5 is equal to x squared. Square root both sides. You take the square root of 16. Yep. You get 4 over square root of 5, square root of 5. Can't have square root in the denominator, can you? Multiply top and bottom by square root of 5. 4 square roots of 5 over 5 is equal to x. So we found the x value, which in this situation happens to be the same as the a value. So I could go up to my a value and change that to 4 square roots of 5 over 5. 
B is twice that, so B is going to be 8 squirts of 5 over 5. Everybody with me? What do I need to do now? Write my equation, but what goes in the bottom? A or A squared? A squared. So I've got to take that A value, 4 squared to 5, over 5, and I've got to square it. What's 4 squared? 16 squared to 5 squared? 5 squared? So it looks like we're going to get 16 over 5 is A squared. If we do that same process for B, we get 8 squared to 5 over 5 uh, squared is equal to 64 times 5 over 25 over 64 fifths is B squared. So, here's what I have. X squared over 16 fifths Y squared over 64 fifths. This is the question that came up in your assignment. Because we don't write things like that, do we? We don't divide by a fraction. Instead of dividing by a fraction, we multiply by the... Multiply by the reciprocal, and the reciprocal of 16 fifths is 16. Now you're done. Is that a cool problem? Did you assign it? So what do you think? Hyperbolas, ellipses, what's this test gonna be like? You Well, I don't know. I'm undecided. I want to hand out a survey tomorrow about your graphic organizers because um, your last test I had you guys make one on your own and some people said that that actually helped them more. Because they like they knew where stuff was, and uh, the last time I did a graphic organizer for you, well, I've done a few of them, but when we did that seven one through seven five test, and I gave you that sheet, people said that they didn't know where to look on it. So, I, I so what you're saying is if it's uh, I I don't know. You tell me what would you would you like me to put together a list of basically what we've had, or would it be more helpful for you to do it? Oh, Samantha puts forth the truth. She says, it's a lot easier if you do it, Mr. Gents, but it's possible I might learn more if I do it myself. Well, I think that that's the question. I'm willing to do it. Far, far too lazy to do math. And you are the cream of the crop. Charlie, this is as good as it gets. All right, there's your assignment. I will probably put together a graphic organizer for you. So I'm just that nice of a guy.